with John the Baptist, they came from Jerusalem and investigated John the Baptist. This may very well be a specific commission or a group from the, from the head honchos. Now, if people were talking about coming from the official source today, where would most religion identify that as? Rome. Rome. They would send out a commission and they'd investigate. Uh, uh, this is from Jerusalem. So this is uh, very specifically stated, from Jerusalem. Um, and so these are the honchos. Wow, we were in, uh, oh, we were in the hospital the other day. And the nurse came in and said, I want to take the uh, baby and go bathe them and do this, that, and the other. And she said, however, we have inspectors in the hospital on the floor. And they're over in that area. We're going to wait until they clear out. You know, at work, when we had auditors in from the SEC, uh, from the, uh, you know, whoever, FBI, uh, <laughs> I'm kidding, uh, Federal Reserve, whoever, um, you, know, you didn't intentionally walk by there to show yourself, right? You know, there's no reason to, okay, well, anyway, these were sent out. Uh, they were sent out, evidently, with a purpose in mind, because as you look, uh, verse 2, Why do thy disciples transgress the traditions of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Now if you look at Mark chapter 7, and you might keep a, a finger over in Mark chapter 7, because uh, he also gives uh, details around this. And... There's some additional pieces of information that Mark gives us that Matthew leaves out, uh, for whatever reason. Uh, when you look at verse 2, and when they saw some of the disciples eat bread with, uh, with defiled, uh, defiled hands, that is to say, with unwashed hands, they found fault. This was not a simple question. What was their intent? Trip them up. They were looking for, they were putting, they were wanting to put a notch on their belt. What's a notch on the belt? Huh? Someone went to jail or. Whatever. Yeah, it's a, it's a, a mark, you know, if you shot somebody, put a oh, notch on the belt. Yeah. 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 Notch on the belt. Uh, auditors, when they come in, uh, we, we fought and fought and fought. Oftentimes, it became very clear in the discussions that the truth didn't matter. They were looking to put a notch on the belt to justify the position, to further themselves along. Uh, and I say that broadly, I don't really mean that all of them are like that. Just like I don't believe that all uh, margin people were bad people. Some were, but not all. So, uh, but they were out for a purpose. They were looking for some way to find fault. Uh, why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. There were two factions. One was the scribes. We talked about them. That was the lawyers. These are the ones that interpreted. These are the ones that really had come up with the oral traditions that had grown and grown and grown. Uh, the Pharisees were, on the other hand, whom? Yeah, uh, and they believe very much in keeping the law with an emphasis on the traditions, the traditions. Uh, and in fact, here, why did thy disciples transgress what? The traditions of the elders. So very specifically, they were... They were putting the traditions right up there with the law, and in many cases, and in fact, Jesus here uh, will denounce them for putting them above the law. Uh, what was the accusation? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Unbelievable. Now, Mom used to tell us, go in and wash your hands before you eat. Sometimes we did, sometimes we didn't. Sometimes she'd look at us and say, 
You didn't wash your hands. Go back, do it again, and this time use soap. So wash your hands. Now, if I didn't do that, was that sin? Alright, keep that in mind. Because that's part of this topic, this discussion. Not the washing of the hands, but the disobedience. Okay? Disobedience. Uh, they missed it in the interpretation. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Now, um, let me also add, in fact, let's go back over to Mark 7. Um, verses, we'll pick it back up in two. And when they saw some of the disciples eat bread with defile, that is to say, with unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they washed their hands off, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels, and of tables. Uh, later on, uh, Jesus will refer back to uh, some of those pieces. What is this washing that we're talking about? Yes. Wash your hands as they ate, not just before. Yeah. As they ate between courses or whatever they got or they did, they dip their hand in a bowl and wash it. Yeah, and there was a certain way that they washed it. You know, they washed it. One writer said that they would wash it and they would hold their hands like this and let it drip down. And then they'd hold their hands like this and let it drip down. I don't know those details, but. Was it about clean hands for eating purposes? It was ceremonial. Where did it come from in the law? I have no idea. Uh, one thought that was given by uh, one individual was the high priest, before offering the sacrifice, had to go to what? The laver? And do what? What was it about? Why did he do that? He was ceremonial, ceremonially showing that washing, that cleaning of the hands before going through the process of offering the sacrifice. Outside of that, I know of no other stipulations regarding the washing of hands. Now, how did that come down from there, if that's the case? How did it come from there to when an individual, not high priest, but when an individual sits down to eat, they have to wash. And then the next course they have to wash. And the next course they have to wash. And going through all of this process, how did that happen? Tradition. Tradition over time begins to look like nothing in relationship to what was originally given. You know, when you look at... Uh, uh, I see so many examples of this, uh, and I hope I don't confuse you with all of them. But, you know, in a, my old business, when I actually worked for a living, uh, now I'm a loafer. Uh, but <clears throat> we were guided. Our main regulation was Regulation T. Regulation U is regarding banking. It's very broad level uh, rules for banking. Regulation T was broad rules for financial services investments. Very short. Not a lot there. But all of the other rules that came out, and there were books and books and books with financial services. You've you got to be careful when you're dealing with people's money. They don't like you to steal it. I don't know why. So they have all of these safeguards put in place. But when you look at these reams of rules and laws, they didn't look anything like Regulation T. And in fact, the interpretations we found oftentimes not only conflicted with Regulation T, but they conflicted one rule with another. Uh, we, had, we had some where if you obeyed and applied this rule, you were in violation of this rule. And when we went for interpretations, they didn't give us any guidance. You know, many times they would interpret this rule this way and then 
few years later, they're interpreting exactly the opposite way. That's man's traditions, interpretations, always have to go back to the source. And that's, you know, I think that's how these traditions came to be about. You know, they, the scribes as being the source. What did people do? Well, they had a scenario that wasn't spelled out exactly. How many of you like to have things exactly spelled out? Tell me exactly. Is this okay? Can I do this? And you can't get a straight answer. Well, they went to the scribes. And so the scribes gave them an answer. And it just added and added and added and added. Or, oral traditions. Verse 3. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. Uh, uh, in Mark, he refers to his Corban. And honor thy father. Uh, honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have you made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition. Now, going to Mark again, chapter 7. Mark includes, you know, it looks like Jesus doesn't even answer their question at all, but Mark actually includes a short answer to their question, their accusation, really. Verse 6. He, said, he answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, that's a strong word, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Oral interpretations, man's interpretations, and man's traditions. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. All right, so that's the immediate response that Jesus gives to them, and then in Matthew we see he moved directly into, uh, in verse 3, he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? So, what was their accusation of him? What did they find fault in Jesus? That... He transgressed his disciples, actually, and as, as their leader, he's responsible for them, right? Uh, keep that in mind. Jesus is being over us. We're responsible. He's responsible for us. Uh, Brother uh, Jacob, the under-shepherd, is responsible for us. Uh, there's a lot of responsibility going on there, isn't there? Uh, and so it's very important. Uh, here's one of those rabbits. Uh, it's very important that the truth be taught. As I stand up here and we go through God's Word, do you think that things that we study in our lessons condemn me or do not condemn me? If I'm failing in an aspect of it, it condemns me. Now, does that mean that I'm a hypocrite in teaching the truth? I have to teach what's true. When the pastor gets up here and preaches the truth, don't sit back there and say, oh yeah, apply that to yourself. It's for you. It's for him. And too many times, you don't look across the room and say, well, that applies to... It's for you. I am held responsible for, but I can't stop teaching it. Okay, does that make sense? And too many times, we, oh, I'm not doing that. They don't do that. We're human. We are sinful individuals. Even though saved, we still are sinful individuals. Um, uh, well, that could go down a whole lot more path. We're flawed. Um, uh, where was I? Um, <clears throat> verse 
verse 3, But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? What was his emphasis? The commandments of God. What was their emphasis? The commandments of men. For God, verse 4, For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. Now, where is he pulling this from? Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments. Exodus 20 and 12. Leviticus 19 and 3. Uh, Deuteronomy 5 and 16. And, you know, if you're concerned whether it carries through in the New Testament, how about Ephesians uh, 6 and 2? Uh, this is a commandment of God that's been given to men, was given as part of the Ten Commandments. Uh, he says, uh, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father and mother, let him die the death. What's die the death? That's exactly right. They bore the death penalty. The death penalty was by what? Stoning. Stoning. Okay. That's pretty severe. Uh, yeah, if it was in effect today, I don't know that any of my kids would have survived. I probably wouldn't have survived to have them. If, actually, truly, if it was in effect today, I wouldn't be. Uh, but, <clears throat> all right. So that was the command given by law. Now, what's his point? Verse 5, but ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift, Corbin. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Again, Matthew chapter 7. <clears throat> Verse 9. And he said unto them, For well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curseth father or mother... Let him die the death. That was the law. Verse 11. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Corban, that is to say, a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited me, he shall be free, and ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such things, uh, like things, do ye. This is one example, in other words. Just one example. So what's he talking about here when he's talking about uh, this being a gift, no longer for father and mother? Who was responsible for father and mother? We really just read it. Children. Yeah, the children. Children were, my children are not here. I really wanted them to hear this. <laughs> They're not here. Uh, the children are responsible for mother. We've gotten a long way from that, haven't we? All right, that's another rep. Children, according to God's word, are responsible for father and mother. What's he saying here? Uh, but ye say, whatsoever shall, uh, shall say to his father, whosoever shall say to his father or mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, is referring to what practice of theirs? The Pharisees in particular. Yeah, there were two possible things here. They would, what they should have been providing to take care of their parents, they were using it, offering it as a gift to the temple, which they were commanded to do. They, I mean, they were commanded to give for the uh, ongoing uh, worship in the temple. They were commanded to do that. Um, instead, that portion that they should have been providing support for parents, they were offering it. Now, what were they doing with the normal pies? Yeah, uh, have you ever heard Switch and Bait? Have you ever uh, seen the uh, uh, hat? Yeah, if you've gone to the ball games, the hat game, you know, or or what a, a lot of our taxes, when they sue, uh, this, this is going to be dedicated to go to education. And sure enough, funds go to education, but the funds that were going to education before no longer go to education and they use it for something else. There are all kinds of shift games, and the Pharisees 
um, were guilty of this, whether it was promising it to the temple and then not giving it and using it for themselves, or whether it was to give that money to the temple and the money that they should have been giving to the temple, that tithe plus offerings, not giving that, however they went about it. It violated the command of God. Now, they, through their oral tradition, said they didn't disagree with the law that you should give, but they allowed that what you're responsible to give to your parents, if you give that to the temple, then you're okay. This, so, this is an exception. This is an exception. Yes. <laughs> Tax breaks. We have exceptions. We have exceptions. That's exactly right. We do. Uh, and things that we should do, oftentimes we in our minds will say, I can do this, double dip. It's double dipping, right? And I'm okay. But their oral traditions don't supersede the law of God. They still had the dual obligation to provide for the temple, for worship, and to provide for parents, right? According to God's word. And that's what Jesus is saying. You exempt this, and you say, if you give it as a gift. That's Corbin, which Mark talks about, uh, with the word that Mark uses, a gift. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, you're saying, I'm sorry, parents. You know, the law talks about taking care of you, but we gave that money to the temple. So, good luck. Hopefully you'll do all right. Uh, verse 6, And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. That was their interpretation. If they give it to the temple, not honor father and mother, although the law told them to, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandments of God of none effect by your tradition. So man's tradition for them had superseded God's word. Does it happen today? Yes. What is false religion all about? It's substituting man's philosophies, man's traditions, and man's rituals for God's truth. Can we be guilty of it ourselves? Absolutely. Absolutely. And we have to guard against it. We have to, you know, as Brother Evan said, a tradition in and of itself is not a bad thing. How many of you have family traditions? If it's to go out and get drunk, that's not a good family tradition, right? I, well, some of you agree with me. <laughs> uh, not all traditions are bad. I don't think Sunday school is a bad tradition. I think it is an opportunity to come together and to free flow. That's a conversation going back and forth with questions. It's interesting that you talk about the Sunday school tradition. I'm going to say a little, people may not agree with me. We visited a church where they had Sunday school after the preaching. Unbelievable. Well, I felt that it was, you know, I, tradition is very weird and strange, right? I know, but Sunday school is a tradition. Sunday school is a tradition. When they first implemented, it was probably weird and strange. Now, yes. I, I get what you're saying. So the focus of Sunday school, the focus of the music, it all should. Yeah. Um, but is it tradition or is it God's word? It may feel, and sometimes, you know, they probably had gotten very used to that ability to say, you know, I'm going to give it to the temple. And for Jesus to say, uh-uh-uh, 
you're superseding God's word, probably felt very weird and uncomfortable to them. I'm not a, I start to say I'm not a weird and uncomfortable person, but to you I might be. <laughs> whether we have Sunday school or whether we don't have Sunday school, whether we have Sunday school before or after, um, those become more tradition, and I think you have a very, very good point. The focus is the preaching of the Word of God. Always should be at the center. Um, what if we had Sunday school Monday morning called it Monday school? <laughs> is that bad? We might have bad attendance. Maybe it's Monday night and Monday course. I don't know. Well, we we had BTC, and right now we don't BTC Baptist training course evening class. But right now we don't. So tradition is a scripture. Okay. So this is, I think, really good discussion because sometimes we are so caught up. Things are not comfortable for us. You know, we go to another church and they do something a little different. They may feel very, very comfortable and it may actually work better for them. Guess what we did? We moved our evening services from 6 o'clock. That's not Missionary Baptist. We moved it to 5 o'clock. How could we do that? What would happen if we changed our morning service to start at 9.30 or 10 o'clock. Why is 9.45 sacred? It's not. It's not. And those are things that, you know, are fairly obvious. There are certain things that work better for us, I believe. And they're okay as long as they don't supersede or interfere with the truth of God's word. Okay? Alright. Uh, where did we get to? Oh, we called them hypocrites. Uh, verse 7. You hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. All right. So here he says Isaiah prophesied. Uh, now when we look at that, that's actually Isaiah 29, 13. Isaiah was a prophet in the northern kingdom of Israel. He was telling them about their wrongdoing, their sins. Uh, he was warning them about destruction that was soon to come. And he was giving them what their problem was. This people draweth nigh to me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips. What's he saying there? The things that they say are the right words. The outward expressions oftentimes may be the white outward, right outward expressions. But, the last part of verse 8, their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. That was all the way back in Isaiah. Isaiah saw it then. What was happening in Israel? All of these other gods from other nations. You know, when... Before the kingdom split, where was worship prescribed? In Jerusalem, at the temple. The kingdom split, ten tribes to the north. Went one way, two to the south, another. Where was Jerusalem? In the south. Uh, Jeroboam, king of the north. What did he decide to do? Why? Because he didn't want to lose the people. He didn't want them going down south. And not coming back. He didn't want them to hear that. Instead, built a temple. They brought in their idols. And they began to worship idols. Now they taught the traditions. 
They talked about Moses. They talked about Jehovah. But they worshipped other gods and talked about it in terms of worshiping, worshiping Jehovah. What do religions do today? Exactly the same thing. They talk a good game about worshiping God. They talk about the blood of Jesus Christ, many of them. But then they start with traditions. You've got to be a good person. You've got to do good works. You have to be baptized. You have to be a member of this church. How many of you are saved because you became a member of Brookside? And the truth is that nobody has ever been saved by becoming a member of an organization. It is a change of the heart. It's placing your faith and trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone saves. Tradition and ritual in the world today far, far supersedes the truth. God's word that's preached. We, and I, I don't mean just Brookside, but all churches that preach the truth of God are a very small minority. Very small minority. Alright. Uh, thoughts, comments, questions? we got four minutes. Sure, we'll wrap it up. Um, verse 10 he called the multitude and said unto them hear and understand what he's saying is pay special attention who was he saying this to it wasn't just the disciples the multitude this was for all of them to hear verse 11 not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man but that which cometh out of the mouth this defiles a man what's he referring to in Israel, they were instructed in the law as to what they could eat and what they were not to eat. It was classified in two camps. One was clean, the other was unclean. Everybody's fairly familiar with that. What was the importance of it? In particular, he was talking about the question that you just asked about eating without washing your hands. Eating without washing hands? Yes. Because it was a question of being clean and unclean. <clears throat> clean and unclean. Now, think of some other things that made you unclean. Touching a dead body. Touching a dead body. No. Leper. Is Jesus ever guilty of that? Yep. Did it mean that he was in sin? Nope. Clean and unclean, in and of itself, did not denote sin, not sin. What did denote sin, not sin? Obedience. Obedience. Okay? When you did those things you were not to do, such as uh, eating with unclean hands, it was more about obedience than it was about clean and unclean. And again, these things were according to the moral traditions of men. Um, keep that in mind. Uh, verse 12, Then came his disciples, said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Oh my! That's a terrible thing, right? Was it a terrible thing? It depends. I mean, who did he offend? The religious elite. That's right. And who looked up to these people? Everybody. Everybody. Why? Because the Sadducees were corrupt as all get out. They were just politicians. Many of them never received their offices due to bribes and due to who I know. Uh, the Pharisees, at least, were people that projected outwardly as walking according to the law. To the point that when Jesus is upbraiding them in chapter 23, he says, and he names some things, 
He says, these things you do well. In other words, you do as you ought to do. But you have left out the important things. Okay? So, the people saw them as very important. So, what Jesus is saying here, these are things that offended the Pharisees. And, by extension, probably many of the people, the multitude that were there, were offended too. Why? Because... They put more importance in religious things than in the things of God, and don't equate the two. Religious and things of God are not one and the same. They were offended. Uh, verse 13, But he answered and said, Every plant that my, which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be uprooted. Does that sound familiar to a parable? Plant uprooted? The wheat and the tares, if you remember, uh, or look at that parable. They're going to be uprooted. Verse 14, let them alone. That was the same command to the servants, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Matthew 23 and 15, Luke uh, 5 and 2 have a lot to say, important to say about that. But we are out of time. We're over by a minute. Uh, many, many other things uh, in here. I do hope um, you had a chance to set a lesson. Uh, go back and take a look at it. Uh, the Word of God is just full of uh, life-changing uh, knowledge. That if we'll study His Word and apply it, uh, it helps to guide us down the right path. Comments?